Hi, I'm John Durrant, and in this video blog, I want to explore a couple of ways of doing multitasking on the Raspberry Pi Pico or RP2040. I was shocked to see that the TV series Knight Rider was 40 years old last month. That made me feel old. I grew up on Knight Rider, loving the concept of Kit, the Knight Industries 2000, an AI car that could drive and talk, and of course, David Hasselhoff as Michael Knight, a man who could make a difference. So in homage to Knight Rider's 40th birthday, I thought I would reproduce the scanner effect, eight LEDs rippling backwards and forwards across the bonnet in a small scale with a Raspberry Pi Pico. So my goals are to create a simple animation of the kit sensor, then to look at two ways to allow the Pico to multitask on other activities while still displaying the kit scanner. I'll look at a polling approach of cooperative multitasking and using the free Artos library to give us a preemptive multitasking approach. I'll need some equipment for this build, a Pico with the header pin soldered so I can plug it into my breadboard, a micro USB cable for power, a breadboard with some jumper wires for making connections, nine LEDs, any color will do, though kit used red, and nine 75 ohm resistors. I'll also need my build environment for writing code, compiling, and flashing the Pico. The three project examples I'm going to show today are in the repository RPI Pico Kit on GitHub. I'll put a link in the description below. I'm going to use a circuit that looks like this, basically connecting an LED to GPIO 0 and then GPIO 2 to 9. Each LED is connecting it in the sourcing mode using a 75 ohm resistor, therefore setting the GPIO pad to 1 or high will illuminate the associated LED. I've got a 5mm LED connected to GPIO 0 via a 75 ohm resistor and then to ground which I've pulled onto the ground bar at the top of the breadboard. I cheated a little for the other 8 LEDs and I've used a homegrown module. Using 1.8mm red LEDs you're able to put the LEDs in a perfect line which is great for this example. I happen to build these for example in a Udemy course so they were sitting on my desk and just looking out to be used as kit scanner. The module are just resistors connected to LEDs and then to ground, making use of the fact that the Pico pinout has GPIOs connected in banks of four with a ground pin just before them, so a five pin module works really well. Finally, in my photo studio setup, I use boot select to load code onto the Pico and therefore I have a reset switch on the bottom of the board. If you're new to connecting LEDs or need more on the reset switch, then I have a course which covers these in depth on Udemy called the Raspberry Pi Pico Micro Projects. Link in the description below. Let's write the simplest code to initialize our GPO pad and ripple through the scanner animation. So our method is to initialize the GPIO pads we're using so they are outputs. Then count up through the LEDs we're using GPIO pad 2 to GPIO pad 9. Then count down through the LEDs GPIO 9 to 2. Then we repeat from the count up step. We'll allow the first and last LED to be illuminated for double time to give the scanner a little weight in its activity. So in the code we use a loop to initialize each of the GPIO pads. The pads need to be first initialized with GPIO in it and then given a direction which is out to be able to illuminate the LEDs. I'll set the GPIO pad as low so that we start with the LEDs off. We can use the same loop approach to perform our count up step. We illuminate the LEDs by setting its value as high. Then delay a bit so we can actually see the illumination before turning the LED off. Doing this through the loop gives us the scan up direction. Then the down loop does the same thing but with a loop going in reverse. So we can see here we have kit scanner working on my breadboard. 
I just need to build the rest of the car now. Right. Of course, in the example, we haven't used the LED on GPIO 0 at all. That is because we just wanted to simply display the scanner animation. But what if we needed to multitask to do something along with the scanner? One approach to that I'm calling polling here, but it's more fully termed cooperative multitasking. We can appear to multitask by breaking each workload, like Kid Scanner, down into steps, having a poll function that we will perform any step necessary for that workload, then having a control loop that calls poll on each of our workloads in turn. Of course, the workload must not hold on to the control in the poll function, but return as quickly as possible. That means we could not use a function like a delay to hold between LEDs and illuminations. I have an approach for avoiding the use of delay in this example. In this example, we're going to have two workloads. Our kit scanner will be one of them using GPIO 2 to 9. Then we'll have a blink or a pulsing LED on GPIO 0. Let's start by looking at our main polling loop. I'm going to encapsulate our workload into two classes, blink and kit. On construction, I will tell these classes which GPIO pad to use for the workload. Then in our forever loop, I'll call the poll method on each of these objects in turn. So let's look at the definition of the kit class. We've already seen that the constructor takes a GPIO pad range as parameters. Also, that we have a poll function. We're holding some key data items too. I'm breaking down the workload into steps, and so we need to know the step we are on, which is the variable x step. Also the number of steps, x num steps. We also need to know what time the last step was executed, because we will only start the next step 100 milliseconds after the previous step was completed. My approach to avoid using delay. So in the poll method, we get the time now in milliseconds. This is the number of milliseconds since the Pico started up. We can then calculate the number of milliseconds since the last step. If that is bigger than our desired delay, 100 milliseconds, then we should do the next step. Once we've done the step, we need to make sure we update x last step to be the current time. The algorithm for kit scanner becomes a little bit more complicated by breaking it down into steps. So we need to manage our step count so we know where in the cycle we're up to. We then convert our step count into a current LED to illuminate and the previous LED to turn off. Then output the GPIO value as we did before. Blink uses exactly the same approach but its logic is a lot simpler as it only has two steps, turn on and turn off. So I won't show all the code here. So here I've put the code running. The kit scanner is working in parallel with the pulsing of the LED on GPIO 0. Though the Pico is not a very fast processor, it is quite quick enough to convince us that two things are really happening at once on a single core of the Pico. If you're new to connecting LEDs to the Pico and want to know how this works, how to calculate the value of the resistor, or play with some of these other components, then please do look at my course on microprojects on the Udemy platform. In the course, I use the same polling cooperative multitasking approach to animate a WS2812B LED ring, then integrate switches and rotary encoders so we can interact with the device a bit more and select animation patterns. FreeRTOS kernel is a library designed to give our Pico a multitasking framework, so we can run multiple tasks and have them communicate together. Our polling example used cooperative multitasking as a pattern. This was great. It required us though to do quite a lot of work to break down our algorithm into steps and to manage those steps through the poll method. Using FreeRTOS, we can use the preemptive multitasking pattern. 
This is what most operating systems use to share time between applications. With FreeRTOS, we can allow the scheduler to do the work or of breaking down our workload and switching between the tasks. This makes our code a lot easier to write. So let's rebuild the same example uh, we use for polling using FreeRTOS kernel tasks. I encapsulate my tasks in classes again. So I'm going to define the kit sensor as kit agent, an active agent object. Once again, we give it the GPIO range in the constructor. We also define a run task, which will contain our code for the scanner animation. In FreeRTOS, we also need to define how much stacks memory is allocated for this agent task. So I define that here too. Our run task can go back to our original simple kit scanner logic. We initialize the GPIO paths, then we do the count up through the LEDs, and then the countdown through the LEDs. The only difference to this code is that we now use a free RTOS function for the delay, VTask delay. It's important we use this rather than the system delay function, as free RTOS needs to know the task is asleep for a period. Our kit scanner agent does depend on a superclass which does some magic to get FreeRTOS tasks up and running. This really just gives us a nice interface to be able to start, stop and manage tasks. Our main program will now start up FreeRTOS, then run a boot task called main task. It is there that we start our kit scanner and blink task. So actually all the code on this side is consistent across nearly all my FreeRTOS projects. So our main task simply needs to create the two objects, Blink and Kit, to then start them as processes. It can then wait forever. The running code for this example looks just the same as our polling example. It was though slightly easier to write, I think. Certainly I had less bugs in the first running version. If you want to get started with FreeRTOS kernel on the Raspberry Pi Pico, then please check out my course on this on Udemy. This not only shows you how to write tasks in FreeRTOS and configure the library, but also how tasks can communicate. So it looks at semaphores, task notification, queues, and message buffers. I'll put a link in the description to the course. So this was a fairly short video blog and having some fun to celebrate Kit's 40th birthday. Does that make him a classic car, I wonder? We've produced our Kit scanner display using a simple task approach, as well as using polling as a cooperative multitasking approach. And finally, using FreeRTOS tasks to preemptively multitask the workloads. If you'd liked my video, please do hit the like button and of course subscribe for more great content. Along with my videos here, I have a growing collection of courses on Udemy. These are on Raspberry Pi Pico or RP2040 development, and some more corporate subjects such as IT strategy and data strategy. Why not check them out? Also look out for my Instagram and Twitter feeds for the updates on my projects, along with my blog, at drjohnea.co.uk. I'll see you soon.